Thank you. Good morning. And um, I hope this is sort of day three of a busy week, I think, for all of us. And um, I've seen some of you at other events. So there may be a kind of iteration and reiteration of some of the issues that I will raise today. But uh, hopefully it's all food for thought uh, and really to drive action uh, as, as, we, as we move away. So it's a great pleasure for, for me to be here to join you. I, as Amanda said, I joined UNDP last year. We did a similar event, but I may have been in week two of my assignment then, so it all seemed to be a little bit gray on the horizon, and now I think the building blocks are there. So from this year onward also within UNDP, we're really looking to, to drive and support even more uh, our, our, our engagement with you in, in the proce approaches to acceleration and, and deepening the relations that we have built uh, with your support and your vision on how business can really help build inclusive growth and how the business community can influence the policy debate as well as give back and engender change at country level, which is what it's all really about. But before I go into a few uh, keynote remarks, I would really like to uh, um, warm, welcome uh, our, my, my fellow Business Call to Action Steering Committee members, uh, Georg Kell, Executive Director of the UN Global Compact, I think known to all of you, um, Mr. Martin Labay, Director of Sustainable Economic Development Department. Martin is uh, seated there and he's raising his hand of the, uh, of the Department of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in the Netherlands and Ms. Maura O'Neill. I don't know where you are in the room, Maura. Warm welcome, the Senior Counselor to the Administrator of USAID on the topic of innovation and Ms. Claire Melfort. We just had the opportunity to introduce Claire. There you are at the back. Maybe if she's totally at the back there. Uh, Claire, uh, the CEO of the International Business Leaders Forum. So we're, we're delighted to, to be together at this, at this point. I would also like to take a moment to recognize the representatives of the BCTA member companies. It's an important momentum that you have built and you have chosen to be part of this particular call to action. And I'm, we're delighted within UNDP also being a very uh, country-based organization and a very operational entity that the, the Norman business call to action says it, says it all. So we're delighted that you're here and we're also uh, even more, more so grateful for the fact that you are, through your leadership and your outreach, you're looking to bring in more members because that way we can accelerate, we can replicate, but we can also continue the momentum. And your, your particular dedication and priorities that you have given to really work on the world's big development challenges of today through core business initiatives that are for profit but really look at inclusive growth models are an inspiration to us all and uh, as you will hear a lot from uh, from practitioners in the development community we often learn a lot from you and we often look when we're looking at our own business models let's say to ourselves and say well how come if they can do it in the private sector how come we can't use it within the not-for-profit sector so there's not only a lot to learn in terms of having good business practices uh, work within the development community, but also really in the linkages that we're making. Now, obviously, today's event, as Amanda already highlighted, and that's why you're here today, is about the transformational role that we can continue to play in the partnership that we have, looking at the development challenges. We're looking to build, particularly from a UNDP perspective, but as I mentioned also on Monday, um, we were looking to build in the run-up to the Rio Plus 20 conference the notion of a sustainable human development paradigm, which is very different from Rio 20 years ago and is also quite a move forward from where we were on the Millennium Development Goals. That doesn't mean we're dropping the goals, not at all. The goals are a framework that help us measure results, that look at the investments required, and that actually measure progress and look at the bottlenecks. But sustainable human development, as we've all come to realize, particularly with the impact of climate change, is about much more than that. The second area, I think, of tremendous recognition and not only spurned by the impact of the, of the, of the triple F, the food, fuel and financial crisis, is the notion of resilience. The fact that a lot of countries, despite their progress, not all citizens within a country benefit. The ones who are vulnerable risk being more vulnerable, and as soon as a crisis hits, the impact hits them the most. Those most disenfranchised really immediately are affected, are impacted, and poverty is intergenerational. So this is also where private sector driven growth can have multiple spin-offs, as you know. We're really looking at job creation, we're looking at outreach, we're looking at sustainable development with the impacts coming across society, and businesses play a key role. But if I can just give one statistic, for instance, going back to the impact of the of the triple F, the World Bank has estimated, as I think a number of you are very much aware, that rising food prices have actually pushed 44 more 
44 million people, an additionality of 44 million into extreme poverty just between June and December of last year. So as much as we talk about progress against the MDGs, there's a greater number of those who had just made it out of poverty, extreme absolute poverty, have been pushed back in. With population growth, the impact of climate change, vulnerability and, 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 and shocks, we, just, we know that a lot more people are at the risk of falling back into the poverty trap rather than having chances of breaking out. So the notion of decent work, employment creation, I think has very key, is high on the agenda of all policymakers. And it's also an area we as a UN need to be much bolder, we need to be much more forthright, and we need to be much more specific. The MDGs are a framework, but the call to action is really where we can make the difference. And this is, I think, also where we see the partnership with you as being instrumental. Now, MDGs, or in future, maybe they are called Sustainable Development Goals, they can only be achieved, as we all know, through collective action. Uh, the days, fortunately, are gone where it was felt that progress on development is really the domain or the unique foray of the development community. They do their thing, that's a good job, and at best, the companies will, will look at engaging through corporate social responsibility. You have really pushed these frontiers, and I'd also like to pay, give uh, due credit to my, my colleague Georg Kell uh, of the Global Compact and all other colleagues here in the room who have spearheaded that vision, that it's about something else. Acceleration, impact is putting pri the private sector economic growth at the forefront of change to create jobs, generate public revenues and also provide access to greater essential goods and services. I just came from an opening event of the IFC and as you know the IFC is looking to to define what its goals will be. And it's, it's tremendous actually the fact that we're looking at goals, measurable indicators for, for, for the role of the private sector and how we can coalesce and how we can look at co-creation and ultimately also be collectively accountable more than mutual accountability where you will tell me what I need to do and vice versa. I think it's taking that notion for further and it's looking at global citizenship. But within value chains, to come back to, to, a, to a concept very much also spearheaded by my UNDP colleagues, Henry Jacklin and his team, we're really looking at business, business opportunities for local communities. As we know, and as often said, despite economic growth at national level, when you unpack it to sub-regional, sub-national levels, local communities still risk being left behind. But the value chain proposal that the business call to action is espousing and UNDP has spearheaded at country level is really about the opportunity to have the poor be agents of change, purchasing goods and services, generate employment, and ensuring regular income. Uh, and from my past life in UNICEF, we always, knew, we always said that an educated woman would make sure that the next generation of children were not only well-fed, well-educated, but being well-educated, they would also then be much more competitive on the labor market. So the spin-offs are tremendous. And if we talk about the multiplier effect on the NDGs, jobs, 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 is one of the key factors. So businesses, of course, and we're looking towards you to really influence and to continue to, to aspire. Now, we obviously recognize, and we can only applaud you, that you've been amongst the community of leading businesses that are supporting these pro-business models, and that you have a lot of ideas, and I hope they'll come out today, in terms of innovation, not only lessons learned, but particularly also the lessons of failures, things that didn't go so well. Because within our dialogue, we often like to tout, and we feel that communicating results is about the best and, and the area that you want everybody to follow you in, but we also want to make sure that there are certain pathways we do no longer follow, or that we, we recognize the idiosync idiosyncrasy of country typologies and situations, sector by sector, and at times also commodity by commodity, where the opportunity lies. Um, now, this platform in particular, and I believe we are now 34 pioneering companies, not yet 1,000, but we're aiming for 50, correct? Okay. <laughs> Just want to get my statistics right here. Uh, they've made, we've made a significant uh, com commitment and progress, and like measurable progress uh, in terms of the MDGs through your piloting, expansion, and scaling up. And if I can just give you a few statistics, now I think they're by contribution and attribution. Um, the BCTA has welcomed initiative that provide access to, for energy to three million people. I think the latest hot off the press uh, yesterday. Improved nutrition for eight million low-income people enhance access to clean water, a significant area of the MDGs which continues to lag behind. And even more so as we're looking at the depletion of natural water resources. It's big. The reduction of carbon dioxide emissions by 2 million tons, 
and create training and capacity building opportunities for, uh, so this is very specific, 269,000, let's just say around the 270,000. And obviously we're looking for more commitments. But in this area, and I think we have to be very honest with ourselves, we're looking at attribution and contribution. I'm sometimes less interested, even though in this results debate that we're having with all our partners, we also need to make sure where we actually spear others and we encourage others to take action. So it's not always about what we have directly done. I think we cannot always ch trace our impact back in a supply chain model from production point to delivery and the consumer one by one, face by face. We can't always count it, but the ripple effect of the change that you are creating is, is significant. And I think that's what it's all about. Three specific examples I'm, I'm asked to ref reference. Movirtu, a UK-based technology firm, has committed to provide up to $3 million. About 70% of them are women. And again, I link back to the economic power that women in households need to have to ensure the sustainability of that households and the social and economic well-being of their children are women in Africa and South Asia with a unique mobile phone identity or a cloud phone. Uh, Cameroon's fifth largest cocoa producer is helping to create new industry opportunities for local cocoa processing uh, facilities and 60,000 local cocoa producers are expected to earn more. This is what empowerment is all about, giving people choices to exercise their right. Choice is all about having the opportunity to have access and to, to exercise your, your right and have your voice heard. Now there are a number of other examples and I think these are just a few. I'm not doing justice to all the in initiatives and the areas of innovation that the BCTA members have obviously uh, spearheaded. And I know within your sector and amongst your peers, you continue to look for new, new avenues. So the inclusive growth agenda is critical. I think it's key. And we see also in the agenda of the General Assembly this week, and again, in the run-up to Busan, the high-level forum on aid effectiveness, as well as the conference next year, we will see and you will be asked as private sector uh, representatives, but also as, as, sector rep as specific sector representatives or representatives of large companies to give your views. And I think this is a unique moment for you to tell us how it can be done differently and what we need to do to change to create the platform for you to work on that inclusive growth agenda. Because there's, it's not only what you need to do, it's also how we need to change our way of engagement, our models of doing business with you to create those open avenues for you to have an impact. But we also understand, obviously, innovation, even within a business setting, it takes time, it takes money, and it takes, uh, it takes that leap of faith to know that your investment in the long term will provide that return on the initial uh, financing place. It's a tough market even in developing economies, and where there's, there's a crowding out. What we are very mindful of, as, as the United Nations Development Agency, is that all efforts are actually targeted, and they're selective, and that there is a greater discipline. There's always a risk when there's a great eagerness and momentum building, and I think the global platform is also that fantastic global community where experiences are shared, and you can find your partner, you can find out if there's an overcrowding of that space. We need to make sure that we're really um, reaching those who are, remain unreached, but also get the biggest bang for the buck. That is not only company terms, it's the same for organizations that run on scarce ODA. We need to make sure that we, we achieve optimal results, and we owe that also to the taxpayers, and we owe that ultimately to those whom we seek to serve. So we're looking very much for new ways to do so, and I'm excited. I won't run you through the agenda. I think Amanda has done that very well. But there are two areas where we're very much looking as UNDP for your perspective. It's opportunities for scaling up business innovations, and I think it very much links also to the market analysis. What are the market trends at the base of the pyramid? Because that's really ultimately what it's all about, where we are, where we're needing to have greater information, greater data, and the, which links back to innovation. Innovation often happens within communities, as you know. It happens without us ever being made aware. And these linkages, I think, are critical for the triangulation of the private sector, the development community, as, as well as the communities themselves that stand to benefit uh, from this exercise. Now, I'm looking to actually now welcome uh, new BCTA member commitments. And this is a moment where I hope you will rise and shine just so we can uh, really honor you.